Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you how to use the residual land value module in my all-in-one model for underwriting real estate. Now this tool is pretty cool. Uh, imagine this scenario, you're considering a piece of property for development. Uh, either there's a bidding process or you've approached the landowner unsolicited and you need to decide what you can pay for the land and still hit some target return that you internally have set for the project. And so this residual land value tool allows you to uh, really drive to specific return metrics based on that land value and ultimately determine you know, what is the most you could pay you or you could offer for the land. So uh, here we have the model. I've gone through, I've already modeled the development cash flows, the operation cash flows, I've added in some permanent debt. I've uh, come to the conclusion that my uh, pro forma NOI and my reversion NOI are appropriate for you know this investment. And now, so I, I've done all of that, I get to the very end. Now what I do is I come to the summary tab, down here under include modules, where it says residual land value analysis. I'm just gonna turn this on or set it to yes. When I do that, first you'll see some changes to returns and the reason for that is the land value assumption that is used by the model in calculating returns and cash flows when you turn this module on changes from what you have set in the budget to what is the residual land value in the residual land value module and I'll, and I'll explain that further. Also what happens when you set this to yes, if you come down here to the, your tab, you're going to notice a residual land tab appear. And so to do this analysis, I'm just going to come over to this tab, I'll select it, and what I see here is a list of return metrics and the result based on the underwriting that I've done so far. The next piece I see is the ability to model when this land cost occurs during the development period. So the default is that the land is paid for all in one chunk, month one, uh, but let's imagine a scenario where you work out some payment structure or you're going to pay at a later period uh, beyond your start month, and in that case you would change your start month and then you would have the length be different. So let's imagine you agree to pay it over a six month period, so you would change this to six. But in this case we're going to leave it defaulted the land will be paid for in month one. The next thing that we want to do is we want to set the return metric that is most important to us. So in this case, uh, we come to the cell F19, and there's a little drop-down menu, and you can select from a list of return metrics. So let's imagine that uh, levered equity multiple is most important to you. Uh, you could change this to levered equity multiple. You then select in this next cell, G20, the levered equity multiple that you need in order to make this project worthwhile. Let's say you use a 2.0, okay? You set that to 2.0, and then you just come down here to this blue box, you click it. What happens is a, a macro runs, and it changes the land value to some value that gets you to a 2.0 equity multiple. And you notice this cell right here tells you what that residual land value is, 3.4 million. Let's use another one. Let's say uh, that development spread is most important to us. And we're looking for 125 basis points in yield on cost above market cap rates as of stabilization. So we change this to 125 basis points. We come down to find residual land value. We hit it. 2.8 million is the land value that we could pay in order to hit that development spread. Now keep in mind, each one of these metrics is slightly different and they have different sensitivities. So development spread, for instance, is highly sensitive to what year you consider your stabilized year. And so if you were to go back one year, it would your yield on cost would be very different. So, so we look at development spread, we come to operating statement, it's based on this stabilized year. Well, if we change this to three, you're gonna see here, if we come back, 
our development spread is now negative in year three. Now we may not consider year three to be the stabilized year, and in this case it's not. We look at year three, um, economic occupancy is 87%, and that's before including our general vacancy. So it does make sense to use year four, but there are some cases where it doesn't make sense to year, use year four. And we're gonna come back 125 basis points. So uh, look through uh, each one of these, uh, mess around with it. So. All right, uh, and you just hit these and you can drive to the return that uh, you internally want. Uh, come up with your residual land value and uh, add some additional analysis to your, uh, your underwriting. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. And otherwise, thank you for your time.